It is a natural progression of the free market system to become as dominant and powerful as possible. But it doesn't stop there, and I'm sure most in this room understand the practice of congressional lobbying by corporations, considered absolutely normal. Well, what is financial lobbying? Lobbying is the prostitution of the state to grant further powers or positions of ease to corporate industries. In other words, if you pay off a few congressmen to support your company's agenda, then you have further secured your position economically. The same thing goes for campaign contributions. Now, people say that's corruption. No, it's not. It's the free market at work. What else do you expect? There is, no such thing as an, there is no such thing as an objective government in a monetary system. It is impossible. The whole society is based on money and income, so why do you think any lines would ever be drawn and respected? We see this BS ethic argument all day long, and guess what? It has never worked. It never will work. Influence and hence corruption is a natural byproduct of our system. It should be expected. In fact, let's take this train of thought even further. Throughout history, there has been one empire after another, each working to secure global land and resource domination. The central reason for war is for resources, profit, empire power, and trade monopolies. Governments are fundamentally no different in function than corporations when it comes to self-interest. The United States invasion of Iraq could be considered a hostile corporate takeover in effect, for even the most naive individuals today know it had nothing to do with weapons or freedom or democracy for the people. I, I don't even want to belabor that issue for it's just considered passe to even talk about it. It's not even in style. We're so used to this level of corruption that we just look the other way these days. However, I do want to clearly point out what war really has to do with if you have any inhibitions. It is for the conquering of resources, industrial profit, and empire expansion fundamentally. In the words of two-time Congressional Medal of Honor recipient Major General Smedley D. Butler, war is a racket. It always has been. It is possibly the oldest, easily the most profitable, surely the most vicious. It is the only one international in scope, and it is the only one where the profits are reckoned in dollars and the losses in lives. Now, it's important to point out that today the pursuit of profit in the market system is generating a different form of empire, a corporate empire, based on merging economies through trade agreements. It's called globalization. I think Jim Garrison, president of the State of the World Forum, put it quite succinctly. Taken cumulatively, the integration of the world as a whole, particularly in terms of economic globalization and the mythic qualities of free market capitalism, represents a vertible empire in its own right. Few have been able to escape the structural adjustments and conditionalities of the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, or the arbitrations of the World Trade Organization. Those international financial institutions that, however inadequate, still determine what economic globalization means. Such is the power of globalization that within our lifetime, we are likely to see the integration, even if unevenly, of all national economies in the world into a single global free market system, hence empire. To put it gesturally, the propensity of the system is to create world monopoly. That is the gestural, natural gravitation of the methodology and philosophy of the free market ideology itself. That is what the psychology sets up. I hope that's clear. It is based on strategic domination, and I think it's time people finally awaken to this. It isn't based on freedom, it's based on conquering. The core basis of social functionality in our society is inherently despotic. There is no such thing as an ethical transaction. Again, ethics and competition are incompatible. For the basis of seeking differential advantage for personal gain is wholly unethical in any civilization, leading perpetually to conflict and exploitation. Dishonesty is the mode of operation at every level, whether you realize it or not. And frankly, how anyone in their right mind could ever rationalize that a balanced, peaceful, sustainable, and productive world could ever come out of open competition, hence open warfare, from individuals competing against each other for work, to corporations battling each other for market share, to governments competing against each other for global economic dominance, is beyond me. We live in a paralyzing, 
detachment-promoting, self-serving system which generates parasites and prostitutes. Each one of us, due to the very nature of the monetary game, is forced into a position of submission, either to an employee or employer, excuse me, or a client. The basic goal is monetary acquisition, not service to social progress. We leech and exploit. Sadly, the only cooperation you'll tend to find these days, or actually ever since the system was created, was when there was a common enemy, meaning when a particular group works to fight against another. Hence, one corporation working to fight against another corporation. Advantage is dishonesty. I hope everyone thoroughly understands that. Moving on, I would like to address some other culturally common attributes of modern society, both institutional and ideological, which are rarely thought about in a holistic sense. This is going to be a little bit abstract, but I would like to show how the integrity of these current conventions are either outdated, polluted by the monetary system and self-interest, or are simply ignoring the root causes of the problems which these conventions are attempting to solve. The four points are, one, laws, rights, and paper proclamations, two, security, three, government as we know it today, and four, activism and so-called ethics. Laws, rights, and paper proclamations. In society today, government attempts to control human behavior by way of threat in the form of laws. Little regard is given to the reasoning behind causes for these so-called criminal acts or socially offensive acts. If a person is arrested for stealing, very little regard is given to the environmental conditions that generated the interest to steal to begin with, the motivation. Is a mother who steals food to feed her starving family a criminal? No. She's simply doing what she has to do. When we reflect on this reality that we as human beings are really nothing more and nothing less than animals, and operate with the same basic behavioral reinforcement, and again, sorry for this graphic, but I had to use it to make the comparison. <laughs> the fact is, we operate with the same basic behavioral reinforcement, survival tendencies as most other species. We see then that it is illogical and irresponsible to consider any human behavior outside of the realm of the social condition. In the early 90s, a study was done called the Merva Fowles study, which found that a 1% rise in unemployment in major U.S. cities resulted in a relatively substantial increase in crime. This shows how so-called criminal behavior is directly related to the socioeconomic circumstances. It should be no surprise that the great majority of people in prisons come from deprived socio socioeconomic positions. Excuse me. Society is producing the behavior particularly scarcity, if you pay attention. And year after year, the number of people in prison rises, along with the number of laws on the books. Therefore, obviously something isn't working, right? Something is not working. Something is wrong. If society was progressively managed with the intent of collective human well-being, then we should be seeing a constant decrease in crime and prison populations, a decrease in laws. In fact, the goal of a productive, stabilizing society would be the intent to eliminate the need for prisons, police, and everything we have just mentioned altogether. I think um, Lisa Simpson put it best. And that's the drunk tank, and this is Mommy's desk. Mom, I know your intentions are good, but aren't the police a protective force that maintains the status quo for the wealthy elites? Don't you think we ought to attack the roots of social problems instead of jamming people into overcrowded prisons? Look, Lisa. It's McGriff, the crime dog. <laughs> this brings us to the concept of security now. Since 9-11, security measures across the world have gone berserk with irrationality. The public at large, especially in America, is now neurotically obsessed with security. 